<laughs> so welcome back to the dive line and before we get started uh quick hello jim jim's over there how you doing hello. jim how you doing you all right yeah looking forward to today's episode but before we get started just want to say a massive thank you to everybody that subscribed to our youtube channel and that's liked us on facebook keep doing that don't forget about the massive competitions we've got going we'll tell you a bit more about that and how to enter at the end of today's show so jim do you want to introduce today's guest yeah absolutely so i'm quite excited about this so we've got ryan wilson uh guitarist with the pigeon detectives He's also got his own Leeds United podcast and he's a scuba diver. He's actually a dive master. So um, that makes him my new best friend. So welcome, Ryan Wilson. <laughs> welcome. Thank, thank you, guys. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Really, really good. Um, hopefully, you know, we'll be all uh, be allowed to properly go scuba diving soon. Yeah, yeah, we're we're certainly looking forward to that. This lockdown, I think, is getting to to all of us, right? And so, well, before we start talking scuba and a little bit about Leeds United and and your podcast, the Pigeon Detectives, where did the band, when did it start, and uh, how did it all come about? Well, we we're all from from Leeds uh, in West Yorkshire, and we all went to school together, and we got to about. 15 maybe 16 years old and oasis were massive at the time and we all started just picking up guitars and going around to each other's houses sitting in bedrooms and you know playing away to oasis tracks beatles tracks and um i think after about a year or so we were like shall we join shall we, shall we make a band and we we're like yeah why not started writing a few songs and then um it kind of went from there really we played local venues in and around Leeds, loads of little pubs and clubs and things like that. And we were kind of lucky enough to to get spotted and we had uh, one of our tracks got put onto a little compilation vinyl, which then was sent down to um, the BBC where a, a guy called Steve Lamack picked it up as, as his favourite track and played it on um, Radio 1 on an evening. And we, we couldn't believe it. We had one of our tracks getting played on BBC Radio 1. And then... Um, the record labels came knocking and just kind of went from there really and with five albums later plat platinum discs gold discs toured the world it's been a roller coaster of a ride but i've loved every second of it what was that track what was that first track Brian? it's called i'm always right and it's the very last track of our debut album wait for me um so yeah that track was written um before our debut album came out and we had it in our repertoire and um yeah we we allowed it to go on this little compilation um cd and vinyl that were what they were just bands from in and around leeds really um but then it got picked up by like i say steve lamack and i don't know if you know who steve lamack is but he's, he's a bit yeah. of an old school dj um he's were one of the top writers for the enemy when the enemy used to be really credible back in sort of the 70s and 80s and um very respected in the music industry and he's a bit of a champion of new bands as well and he came to watch us um, play some of our early concerts in london and yeah we were just over the moon when when he played that track because it, it meant a lot it's funny actually it's uh, that could have been written for me that because i'm always right <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think it was uh, I think i've it always was, been told that yeah, yeah. That's for sure <laughs> well i think it was the uh the lad who wrote it ollie as our other guitarist i think he um i think he wrote that about his girlfriend at the time or something so um <laughs> it's um it is to do with relationships uh, all right. <laughs> cool. so you you've released five albums in total have you got a favorite um not necessarily the the, the first one obviously means a lot for because the first one got us to where to where we we sort of are now really um it, it kind of went really big it went platinum in the uk um but i think the third album is currently my favorite and the reason with uh, for that one it's an album called up guards and atom um we went to live in new york in america for about three months and um living over in new york and soaking in all the atmosphere and it, it was over the summer it was red hot it was just an incredible time of my life. I just absolutely loved it. Um, it was just brilliant. And we like a lot of New York-based bands, kind of a lot of our influences. You can see one behind me, uh, Blondie, uh, Parallel Lines, a yeah. fantastic album. Um, bands like Blondie and more modern bands like The Strokes. Um, bands like that really influenced the Pigeon Detectives. Um, so um, to be, you know, on their patch, 
making an album in a fantastic studio, a beautiful studio we was in. It was a kind of a dream come true, really, and um, amazing to live in New York. It cost us a fortune. We, we, we all came back absolutely skints. It's an expensive place to live, but um, it were a brilliant few months. Yeah, I'll yeah. bet. I'll I, bet. I'm yeah. actually, sorry, Jim, I, I've got a little bit of a complaint about one of your tracks because I, I've got a few <laughs> tracks on Spotify, and last week I was on the way to work. The sun was up. The roof was down on the car and I had, I found out full blast in my car. <laughs> that track is just too short. It, it just needed to go on a bit longer because I just love that track. That an emergency, but but yeah. uh, I found out is, is just brilliant. It's a three minute pop song. That's why it's a pop yeah. rock song, that one. Yeah. Um, just really short and sweet. And we just kept it like that, really. Um, that was one of the singles off our first album and did did pretty well. It did that one, one yeah. of our top twenty singles. Craig, Craig looks like he likes I mean, it. That's pop, really great, it? isn't it? I mean, like you say, going to New York and doing all that so interesting for you. I guess yeah. at the moment with lockdown, you've you've had to put everything on hold, have you? And I know you had a a, a load of gigs coming up in May, so you're obviously not doing those. What's yeah. what's the latest for you with with all of that? Well, if the, uh, yeah, we were supposed to be on tour in May, which obviously got postponed, and it's been postponed to October. But I'll be honest with you, there's word on the grapevine that that might not even happen, um, not just for us, but for for all bands. You know, um, when you think about it, the gigs we're doing are 1,000 to 2,500 capacity. You've got 2,500 people crammed in a small building. Obviously, that's not going to happen, is it, anytime <laughs> soon? So, um it's kind of fingers crossed for October, but if it doesn't happen, we'll, we'll look forward to, you know, maybe spring, summer next year. There's nothing we can do. This is the longest time in in about 15 years that I've not played a gig. You know, I've been playing gigs. Uh, our first ever gig was 2004. Um, we never stopped playing, really. Um, even when, you know, we wasn't playing, we was in a studio or rehearsal room writing and things. Um, if people are watching this visually behind me, I've got, one of my, I've just brought a guitar back from from our lockup space, and um, I've got an extra guitar I've brought home. So I want to start writing a little bit more at home. Um, so, yeah, it's it's. I'll be honest with you, I'm I'm pretty sad because of not uh, because the lads are my best mates as well. So just being in a room with them and having a laugh and playing and touring, it's been brilliant, you know, for the last fifteen years or so. Um, so it's difficult, but obviously it's difficult for everybody. You know, you guys, you can't really get out scuba diving and things like that as much as you want. So all hobbies and interests and professions, we're all affected at the moment. Not a lot we can do. We've just got to ride it out, look after each other and stay safe, really. Absolutely. Can you still remember how to play the guitar then? Has it been well, that long? <laughs> um, funnily enough, I feel like I've got a bit better because that's, oh, really? one of my, yeah, that's one of my Gibson guitars I've brought back. It's a bit more of a rocky guitar, a bit heavier. Yeah. But I have got a Fender guitar at home, um, a Fender Telecaster, which is the first guitar I've ever, I ever bought. Um, and that's always stayed at home, really, because it was quite cheap, to be honest with you. And as I became more professional, I got slightly more expensive, better handmade quality ones, etc. But I dug out the old Telecaster, and I've been playing it quite a lot. And I've kind of tested myself. Um, I learned to play um, the guitar solo in Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, oh, wow. Right, obviously... You know, Brian May's an amazing guitarist and I like Queen and um, I'm the rhythm guitarist in my band. So I don't really play solos and things like that. I'm kind of me, the bass player and the drummer, where the backbone of the tracks. Um, but Ollie, our lead guitarist, he, he's a fantastic guitar the guitar player. He's, he's better than me. He's, he's much better than me. So he does all the trickier lead stuff. But in my own time, I've been kind of testing myself a bit and learning a few hard things. And um, yeah, I've probably improved, believe it or not. So I just need to... <laughs> take them skills out and get back on the road playing wow brilliant. well at least you've made the most of having uh time on your hands well, yeah well, thought, so talking about leads mm -hmm. <laughs> that could be a good link to the next bit <laughs> <couldn't it? laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh, you know what about the, so you're a professional podcaster in our eyes really um <laughs> you, you guys do this live every wednesday um but it's about a subject that's um, really close to to me and something that I really enjoy. Craig doesn't so much, but it's all about Leeds United. So, yeah. um, would you like to tell us a little bit about that? And when do, when do we come on? Well, you're welcome on anytime, guys. Craig, you know, as long as you don't criticise Leeds too much, we might have to kick you <laughs> off otherwise. But um, 
it. Yeah, I co-host a podcast called LS11. Uh, it's a Leeds United podcast. LS11 is the postcode of Ellen Road, Leeds United's football stadium. Um, and I co-own the, the the channel, the the whole fan channel, LS11 Leeds United fan channel. So I've um, been doing it around about 18 months now, and we've kind of done really well. With, we've just got announced. To, we've just been uh, nominated for best podcast best podcast in the uk um for the football podcast um football content awards cool. which is a, a big thing and last year we was nominated in um for the best sports podcast at the british podcast awards which is like the oscars for the podcast we couldn't believe getting nominated for that it was especially a little podcast specifically on Leeds united you know we're not a broad range podcast. We don't talk about all football clubs and leagues and things, just Leeds United. So, so we are the biggest club in the world. So, you know, well, we, we are, we are, yeah. we are the biggest <laughs> and best club in the world. So, <laughs> so, yeah, so I've been podcasting with a pal of mine called Darren Harper. And I'm lucky because Darren, he's worked in, in, in radio broadcasting for many years. So he's a very good, um, he's a very good host. He's very good at um, presenting and, He's, he's improved me a lot as well um, with my presenting skills and things like that. Because as you know, guys, it's it's quite difficult when you're yeah. when you're not used to talking down a microphone to a to a camera or or, or whatever. It, it can be quite hard work, um, certainly to start with. But it's like anything, really. Podcasts they're a thing of a they're a thing of a hobby, in my opinion. You know, I love doing it, and I love listening to podcasts that I'm interested in. And you know, you get a lot of like minded people on the podcasts that you're interested in, and um yeah it's been brilliant we go live every wednesday morning and it's quite tricky going live because you can have technical faults and there's no room for any editing or anything like that but when you're just talking about the, the what's been happening in and around Leeds united football club it's quite easy really we've got an ex-player on our podcast a guy called ben parker who used to be a left back at Leeds united um about five ten years ago i think he, he quit uh, or moved on sorry um so it's good to get his insight as an ex-player and um, me as a fan, obviously, I give him my insight as a fan. And yeah, we're doing quite well. Leeds United fans appear to like it. So uh, we'll keep doing it when people until people stop listening. We'll, we'll keep doing it. Yeah, you must be so excited now after all of this time in lockdown that you've got six games coming up. You've got a couple of the uh, Welsh clubs. You've got uh, Swansea and Cardiff. You've got Blackburn coming up and mm -hmm. six games to, to actually happen. And uh, I think you're going to be able to see a lot of those on the red button on the TV. Is that is that yeah. right? Yeah, that's correct. Well, it's actually nine games, Craig. Yeah, um, nine. There's nine, yeah there's nine games left of the, the, our season. Um, and yeah, the first one's away down in uh, South Wales in Cardiff. So um, that's always tricky for Leeds United to go down to Cardiff. Oh, and the second game's against Fulham and Fulham are chasing us. They're in third place. We're currently at top of the league and it's quite tight with points. So um, that Fulham game, which is the second game back of this um, new season kind of thing, um, it's going to be a real tricky one for Leeds. Um, if we win that, you know, it'll look good for us. So, yeah, I'm really excited for it to come back. I'll be honest with you guys. We've been podcasting throughout all this lockdown and we've been struggling for content. We've been, us, the, the guys on our podcast, we've just ended up chatting about what we've been watching on Netflix and things like that, to be honest with you, <laughs> rather than the football. But um, we've so watched the Damned United a few times in, in lockdown. Uh, too many times, to be honest with you. Yeah, too many yeah. times. Well, <laughs> Everyone that knows me knows that I'm a Spurs fan and you two guys, both Leeds fans, but I'm a football fan. Uh, yeah. And like all of us together, we've all just so missed, but, you know, um, the banter and uh, you know, talking about the games and what happened at the weekend. And, you know, just so exciting now that we're going to be able to to have those conversations again. And uh, you won't be looking for content so much, Ryan. Yeah, well, no, definitely. Exactly. I'm, I'm a football fan, too. You know, I've been watching the Bundesliga quite a bit. Um, but when the Premier League starts, I'll, I'll, I'll be I'd be really interested to watch Premier League as well to see. Obviously, look, it looks like Liverpool are probably going to win the league, but you know, there's a, there's a, a teams in the pack chasing for that Champions League spot and European spots, and obviously the relegation zone. So it'll be just brilliant to have any football to talk about. Obviously, us personally for our podcast, you know, we'll be talking about you know primarily Leeds and and what's going on there. So um, yeah, just can't wait for it to start. I'll be honest with you, I've I've got quite a, a bit of anxiety and nerves about about it you know it's, it's excitement yeah. anxiety yeah. absolutely because, 
because yeah. if any, anybody knows anything about Leeds, we in the last few years we tend to mess it up quite a bit in the in this final stage of the season. So, um, you know, if it can go wrong, it always goes wrong. About well, not about now, because obviously we're in, in middle of June, but yeah, towards the end of the league normally. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's quite nervous times being a yeah, Leeds it's fan. A, it's a funny old time for us, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think we'll do it? Uh, what's the general feeling? I've, I, I, I'd like to say I think we will do it, but the the footballing gods might be listening and watching us, so I don't want to say too much that they can hear, really. Yeah, don't to jinx it, dear. Um, no. But look, maybe I'll jinx it now. I, I think we'll do it. I think Marcelo Bielsa is an incredible coach, certainly at this level. The, um, the word out of the camp is the lads are... Um, just as fit, or if not fitter and stronger than they were before the break. So um, we're going to come out of the the blocks fast. Um, Marcelo Bielsa's start to his seasons with Leeds United, uh, at the beginning of the seasons, he comes flying out of the traps anyway. So um, everybody's hoping it'll be almost like the start of a season again, you know, um, get off to a really good start and um, blow these teams out of the water. And, you know, there's only nine games. We've got the points gap a little bit between us and third um so you know if we win you know if we win five six of them nine i can't see it, it going wrong to be honest with you do we are I've, I've, I've actually starting to feel a bit sick now talking to you about it <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's <laughs> father's day it's when it's at it's 12 o'clock father's day isn't it it's on tv so yep. you know that's the first one and like you say cardiff is a it's a little bit of a bogey team for us it but, um, and it feel, does feel like the the start of a season to me it because does. it's been that long and I do I'm talking to you now I'm starting to feel <laughs> yeah. that, that's the interesting thing because the only time we're used to having a break in football of course is during the close season and then when football starts at the beginning of the season we you know we're, we're so excited and it's going to continue for a whole season we're looking forward to this restart and then you know eight, nine games and then the season's finished and we stop again. It's going to be yeah. so strange, you know, that short period. To, but all of us are looking forward to it, of course. Yeah, so, it is. I'm kind of treating it a little bit like kind of a World Cup or something, you know, a short tournament. Yeah, um, that's yeah. kind of how I'm kind of getting my mindset into it, especially in the summer months. You know, obviously the World Cup's played over the summer and the last World Cup were fantastic. I had barbecues yeah. in the garden, friends round took the tv outside and we had we had some great times but obviously we can't really do that now because of the lockdown i know you can have a few people in your garden um but you know me and my wife have been really respectful of the, of the rules and everything because we want this this pandemic to to go mm -hmm. away as quick as it can and i think if everybody abides by the rules as tough as they are then it'll go away quicker but um obviously on the football front for every football team every football fan it's going to be disappointing not to be, be able to go in the in the stadium and support your team you know um if Leeds united finally win the league or, or finish second and we get promoted to the premier league it's a massive massive thing for the club Leeds united got relegated in 2004 16 years ago you know it's yeah. a long long time we've been out of the top flight and we're a Too big long. club yeah. Too long. It's a big club. It needs to be up yeah. in the Premier League with us. You need yeah. to be playing the Man Uniteds and the Tottenham's and the Arsenals and the Chelsea's. Yeah, that's yeah. where Leeds should be. We don't. Yeah. We need to be beating them, not playing. <laughs> playing and beating. Yeah. <laughs> some of them. You can beat some of them. Not, not, yeah. not all of them. Not we normally beat Spurs, to be fair, so that's all right. <laughs> you remember that long ago from 16 years, Jim? I tell you what, I remember a good oh, game. <laughs> I remember a good Spurs game, uh, probably more than sixteen years ago. I think it when Lee Boyer, one of our midfielders, kind of two foot tackled um, Tim Sherwood in the chest at Ellen yeah. Road. <laughs> it was incredible. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was there um, for that game. Yeah, and um, last game. Well, we've we've met Spurs a few times over the years. Recently, um, I remember a, a cup game and we beat them two one. I think. Um, Ross McCormack scored a, a great goal to to make make it two one um, in one of the one of the cups, League Cup or something. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it, it, Leeds are a massive club and with a big history, and we need to be up there in the Premier League, like like you say, playing these top teams like you know Spurs, Arsenal, Man United, City, Liverpool. You know, we need to be competing yeah, up there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I can't Brilliant. Wait. Okay. When we do get promoted, I'll uh, I'll be up in Leeds City Centre. I'll be I'll be there. One of the as long as social distancing is removed, I'll be up there with the 
millions of others that will be there. Yeah, well, we've we've been um, contacted by a few organisations um, like the Leeds United Supporters Trust, a, a big foundation that do a lot of good work in Leeds for Leeds fans and in the community. And everybody's really worried about fans congregating into the town or around the stadium because that could have a lot of bad implications. Leeds could get into trouble, could get fined. Yeah. Football matches might get moved out of the city, and and we don't want any of that. Um, and I'm sure no football club does. So I mean, if you're a football fan of any club, just keep your distance, support support your team from home, and 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 look, we'll be there one day. You know, this this pandemic ain't gonna last forever. You know, it might be next year when we can all get in a stadium again, but we'll be there soon. And and when we do, we'll enjoy it then. So um, yeah, just look after each other. Yeah, yeah very wise words and uh yeah e excellent so let's talk scuba and uh where did your scuba journey start when did you actually become a, a diver ryan um 2009 um i don't know if people can remember but in 2009 there was the swine flu outbreak <laughs> yeah. of a, well it wasn't quite a pandemic but um it started off in mexico and i had a holiday book to mexico and um Subsequently, that got cancelled, and um, the only place at that time of year to go that was warm was Egypt. And uh, never, me and my well, my girlfriend, who's now wife, we, we'd never me and my girlfriend at the time we'd not been there uh, before to Egypt, and it was hot, and it was just a uh, you know I've been doing a lot of touring and just wanted to get away and relax, and so we went over to Egypt. And I've always been fascinated with the water, even as a kid watching things like little mermaid i always wanted to be under the water believe it or not so um yeah i um i, I saw the dive center there and, and i thought Do you know what the dive center's in the hotel i went and had a chat with them and it was um ssi um it was SS, ssi run um dive center i did their equivalent of the open water course and they gave me the books and the instructor i had a few classes and i was sat around the pool reading my book and doing you know the quizzes and things like that and then uh, we went out and did a few dives in the Red Sea. And what an incredible place to to do your first bit of diving. I think on, on my second ever dive, um, first dive, we went about 10 meters in this, just this little area. Second dive went a little bit deeper and um, I saw a huge big manta ray just really gracefully glide over my head. And I, I was absolutely in awe. And I'm like, wow, that's an amazing sight. And I think I've still got the photo somewhere. Um, and... At the time, my instructor had my underwater camera because obviously as a new diver, I needed to concentrate on my BCD and everything like that. So um, my I instructor said, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So my instructor said, I'll take, I'll take your camera. I took a few pictures of you under the water and a few other things. Um, and then he got he got a, a pretty decent snap of this beautiful manta ray flying over our heads, um, about 12 metres deep, something like that. We weren't very deep. And um, it was... Um, an amazing experience i absolutely loved it and we got out of the water and my instructor said look i'd do about 250 dives um a season out here and he said i've only seen that three times he said you're quite lucky to have a manta ray in this area so that were um that were really that were really good to, to see that and we saw big tuna fish and things like that That's, so uh, did your wife girlfriend dive with you was she with you she was on the boat but she, she's she's not a scuba diver she's not very comfortable in the water she's a good swimmer but i had to teach her to um, snorkel on that particular holiday believe it or not you know i've always snorkeled you know, on any holiday that i've gone on and things like that but it's just some people as you know working in dive centers teaching the, the act of putting your face underwater and trying to breathe some people just struggle with it you know it's, it's it's an unnatural thing to do and my wife's kind of one of them and as soon as her head goes underwater she's not comfortable and so she's never dived um unfortunately for me because i probably do a little bit more diving or certain like liverboards and things like that if she was interested but unfortunately unfortunately she's not but she, she comes on the boat where she can you know and has a day out with me uh, well, I jump in the water for an hour or so. So, yeah, she's she's always with me. I mean, the Red Sea is an amazing place to to dive at any point, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah. To, to learn to dive there must have been amazing. And uh, I mean, we've we've seen manta rays as well, and that it's like you say, they're so graceful, incredible yeah. animals, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Very happy to see that on your on your sort of certification dives. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. But you, yeah. I mean, you have gone a bit further, haven't you? The banners that have been coming up says Dive Master. You obviously decided to take that a bit further um, yeah. and to go 
sort of pro. So how, how, why did you sort of think about doing that then? Well, I got the bug, quite simply got the bug. Um, I came back, back home to Leeds where I live and um, there's a dive centre in Leeds. Believe it or not, you know, Leeds is nowhere near any any coast. <laughs> it's kind of like quite as, as the middle of the inland as you can get, really. But we're a, we're a, a, an hour and a half away from the east coast and similar to the, to the west coast. But there's a dive centre in Leeds. It, it, at the time, it was run by a bunch of really good people. Um, and I went there and had a chat with them, and that was a paddy run dive centre. So um, we did like the crossover course to do the advanced open water course. Um, and we started doing some inland diving um, at Cape and Ray. I uh, went over and did my advanced open water at Cape and Ray, which is in Lancashire, um, an old quarry. And yeah, I just absolutely loved it. And I started just progressing from there as well. Um, started to buy my own gear, got, got my own regulators and um, my own dry suit my own bcd things like that you just started buying bits of equipment where i could um, dive computers things like that um and just going out diving as much as i could with friends who i met at the dive center started doing specialities and then um once i kind of exhausted all that i had a chat with the guy who owned the dive center at the time and he just said do you want to go professional which the first level's to be a dive master i said well what does it include and sat down and had a chat you know about all the you know the the training learning you have to do and all the different aspects to, to pass the course and it's a very big course to, to do actually there's a lot of things you have to tick off to yeah. pass your dive master it's course a course to do satisfying yeah. when you're finished for sure yeah yeah it took me quite a while to be honest with you quite simply because once i started doing that i was doing a lot of touring and a lot of writing and recording and things like that so I'd, i had very little time to dive and there were people who started the dive the, the dive master course with me and by the time i'd finished my dive master they were they'd gone on to be instructors they because they'd had so much more time than me to do it they'd they'd flew past me you know um so yeah i eventually did it and it was so satisfying i remember actually passing my course um it was on a saturday afternoon i was doing some training in a pool um with the master instructor at the time and he signed it off and that was the last thing and it was my friend's birthday in Leeds city center so i literally jumped in the shower at the swimming pool dumped all my gear in my car drove my car to my mate's house and went straight into town and into leeds and ended up getting on the beer and had a bit of a celebration for my friend's birthday and for me passing my dive master course eventually I mean, it's an achievement isn't it i mean i've mm. when i passed my dive master and i'd qualified i just felt that i'd i'd just achieved something quite special really and i think it is because it's yeah. a lot of hard work exactly not not only the aspect of having to do like the dives and doing the things you have to do in the dives but the aspect of learning how to teach you know like that's quite difficult really it doesn't come naturally to a lot of people uh, being able to work with other people and certainly teach so um yeah it, it wasn't it wasn't easy I, I i must admit i didn't really i didn't really struggle with much um but i had to work hard on on quite a few aspects of it um eventually and, and i got there and um i had a great team around me to be fair some great instructors helping me out and the guy who owned it is one of the the master instructors i think they're called well, course yeah. director i think they call them sorry it's a course director which is one of the highest levels of uh, accreditation you can get at paddy and um and he was brilliant. He's a natural teacher. You know, I used to watch him, how he used to not only teach, but how he'd speak to people and educate people. And he, he, he was really, really good at what he does. And um, no wonder that dive site was quite successful with instructors and things like that, because they had a great course director running the show. Yeah, it does make a huge difference, mm. huge, huge difference. There's some really good ones out there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. So, so Ryan, what, what's your most memorable dive? Ooh, um, most memorable. I, I, pro probably, I mean, I've done. A lot, I've been lucky. I've done quite a lot of good dives, but I really liked Rex. Um, really, really, really into Rex. And I was out in Malta on a dive trip, and um, we we dived at a wreck called the uh, El Farouk, which is a, a huge, huge container ship, and it's split in half at the bottom of the sea. And I just remember we were just kind of descending down towards it. And as the visibility opened up and you could see this great big wreck and it was snapped. And um, I remember being quite in awe, like, wow, this is incredible. You know, this huge, huge ship and you're just descending down onto it. Um, 
I just absolutely loved that dive and I still remember it today, to be honest with you, a, a superb dive, all the lot of it, you know. Um, and yeah, wrecks fascinate me and I, I just um, absolutely loved that one in particular. But I do like a bit of wildlife and things like that as well. You know, I was diving out in Indonesia a couple of years back um, on some islands called the Gili Islands. And um, I was on an island called Gili Air and um, there's a lot of, it's an area where a lot of turtles nest and breed and I saw some beautiful turtles all just sat resting on rocks and all the coral around it because it's that part of the world. It was beautiful. Um, so, yeah, that, 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 was, that was also a very memorable dive, that particular that, one in Gilead. Sounds really nice. Do, yeah. you, do you have a, a UK, a special place for UK diving that you, you know, your favourite UK dive site? Well, I really, really like UK diving, but obviously, as you know, UK diving – can be quite difficult with the weather you know it's quite sometimes i've been diving and i love the northeast coast by the way that's my favorite i've dived down in anglesey um i've been been to quite a few places all around the uk up in scotland you know um but i quite like like a place called sea houses and bambra there's the fan islands there which is really good fun there's some wrecks off there um, as well which are really good to dive and that was actually the first uk dive uh, uh, in the sea anyway and um, that i did was out on um just just uh, near the fan islands so um and i like to go back there because it's actually a really beautiful part of the world it's yeah. It's got really big gold and sandy beaches there as well. And um, it's a really nice area to dive. And you've got a lot of seals there which come and play with you, which is um, it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, um, the, the, the underground, uh, the underwater topography as well with the, the big kelp forests and yeah. swimming through. You know, we, we were, uh, Jim and I love the Farn Islands and it's just mm -hmm. swimming through the kelp and all of a sudden a seal just appears in front of you, yeah. looks at you, comes over, has a little play with your fins, swims up and looks at his reflection in your mask. And uh, it's just an incredible dive for Farn Islands. We love it. Yeah. You know, it the, the one thing about doing this podcast and talking about diving makes me want to go diving. <laughs> yeah it does it does when, when we spoke the other the other last week guys when we were talking about me coming on this podcast yeah. it made me want to go diving you know um but obviously we're a little bit restricted at the moment um yeah. but, but also it's another place in the uk which is a brilliant brilliant dive which i'd recommend to anybody it's a place called the uh, lundy island and it's in just outside the bristol channel um that part of the world and um it's a protected area so you actually get a lot of um a lot of coral and and a lot of life there you know it's not all dredged up as a seabed it's a really really good place to dive and they often get dolphins there as well yeah it's a lovely place uh, mm. i mean there's a lot of um protection there i think uh tim clements from vobster was talking about the citizen science project that they're doing at lundy island so right. you can get involved in doing some environmental environmental work and logging data um to help protect that area so that's really good yeah oh good good yeah you you mentioned our our previous chat uh, and i'm going to remind you of your promise ryan that you did say you're going to get all your dive gear out of the garage and get it serviced ready to guide us around cape and ray have mm -hmm. you done it have you got your gear out yet i haven't done it yet but it is going to happen 100 percent because today believe it or not i actually bought some like uh, disinfectant stuff to, to to clean some of my gear um <laughs> like a non non abrasive disinfectant thing um like uh like a dettol but just like one that doesn't smell as much as dettol um yeah. because i'm gonna get it out and clean it and then i'm gonna take it to the dive center and get it done i, I definitely am and funnily enough i mentioned it to, to my wife today when we was in in the supermarket earlier i said i need some that disinfectant to clean my gear <laughs> But yeah, I've I've not managed to dive over in the UK for probably about eighteen months or so now. It's been been a little while just just due to circumstance, but um, with with work life and things like that, and um, yeah, it's just you know sometimes difficult finding the time. But yeah. um, it's been fair weather diving really when I've been on holiday, jumping in, having a little splash when um, when I'm on my holiday. But um, well, you need to get your stuff. You need to get your gear into uh, your dive centre and get it serviced. Get your regs mm. serviced. Get your BCD and dry suit done because Cape and Ray opens on the twenty third of June. I think. Does it? Not yeah, too far away. No, there no, we no. go. And day, uh, anyway. We had uh, Carol, who owns Cape and Ray, came on as a guest. Uh, and we promised her that that uh, not long after she opens, we'll be coming up to say hello and shoot a shoot, 
little bit of video up there, which we'll really look forward to doing. But we need somebody that knows the area that's going to guide us around, and you're that man. <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got the uh, the map on a slate um, with all the coordinations, and just after uh, hopefully my compass skills are still there, and um, and the visit if the visibility is good, we'll be able to get around it no problem. Excellent. We'll look forward to that, eh, Jim? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I can't wait. I mean, that looks like an awesome place to dive with all the sturgeon and the wrecks that are in there. And, mm. you know, it's just one of those places that you've never got around to doing or we've never got around to doing. But you, when you look at all the pictures that people have put on during lockdown, you just think, why have I not been there? Yeah, it's yeah. an incredible place for, for an inland dive site. It's brilliant. You know, that and Stony Cove were the two that I used to go to quite often. Being in Leeds, Stony Cove was about but roughly two hours down the motorway straight down the m1 um and cape and rear was just a little bit shorter an hour and a half or so um and they've both got the, their advantages advantages and disadvantages for example if we wanted to do a bit of deeper stuff we'd, we'd have to go to to stony cove um but cape and rear is brilliant a few years back they, they put a, a big aeroplane in there and um they've like hollowed it all out and you can swim through it and it's it's a great great dive and again descending onto this big aeroplane it's just great to see and we've got quite a few other little wrecks in there interesting things in there it's um a really great place to dive and yeah they've got the sturgeon in there and that they're jet black these sturgeon and that they look prehistoric it's great it's great when you swim alongside of one of them looking yeah, forward to seeing you man so mm. so where's on the bucket list ryan where where is the dives that you think oh one day i must go and dive at where's um, the act? For me, I'd love to do Truck Lagoon. Oh um, yes, yeah, that's um, because I love wrecks, so that that'd be amazing. Um, but I really want to go to the Maldives, a because it looks absolutely beautiful, the the little golden sanded islands. Um, because I love a sunny holiday. Me and my wife love going away, relaxing, and things like that. So I'd love to go there because the wildlife looks incredible there. You know, um, I'm not sure what type of wrecks they have there, but you know, there, there may be a few artificial reefs or something um, being being sunk, but at the same time, I just think it'd be a, an amazing place to go diving. So, sort of, yeah, Truck Lagoon and the Maldives. Yeah, I, I actually was fortunate enough to uh, learn in Maldives on my honeymoon wow. in '93. Wow. So, yeah, we did some incredible diving, and uh, my very first open water dive saw a whale shark. Really, oh, incredible. Brilliant. never seen one since 25 years <laughs> of diving never seen another one <laughs> but <I've> seen one <laughs> when i was in bali diving um i saw a whale shark but it was just after we got out of the water we got on the boat going back and there was a great big whale shark and we um we stopped off we give it some distance obviously and we stopped off and we jumped in the water with the snorkels on and managed to get a little bit of film footage of it but i didn't see it while i was actually diving unfortunately yeah mm. Yeah, it's a very special experience when you see him. Yeah, Just can like imagine. that manta ray, yeah. Mm. Jim's uh, dived in Australia uh, and uh, seen whales. That, yeah. that must be really well, special. I mean, that's that's just wow. I mean, yeah. you can't even put that into words to see. <laughs> wow. Well, no, you just honestly to see animals like that is just it is wow. I mean, they're just an amazing. They're just such big friendly animals and uh, yeah it's just i mean i i, I want to go there every day and just swim with them all day what what type of whale was it the humpback it... whale oh really wow yeah so they just big as well. in the, the background here look just like that is that one of your photos or no, I wish it was. <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna say that's a, a fantastic wish, photograph yeah, yeah no it's a, yeah. amazing they're, they're incredible animals and yeah so, I mean, that's a, that's something that you you don't often get to do. You got to go a long way to to see them. Yeah. So, so did you just go quite far out to sea and just jump and do a, a relatively shallow oh, they're, dive? They're, they're quite close to shore. They're quite all close right. to shore. Yeah. I mean, there's various places you can go all along the the um, Western Australia. So, um, yeah, it's it's. I think the season is April to September, something like that, and. Mm. Uh, You've got whale sharks you've got humpbacks it's on a migratory route so yeah. um and dolphins you've got i mean out out in australia you have everything don't you so yeah um, but there are specific times that are better than others but yeah it's it's incredible i, I just want to go back just, yeah don't blame me 
just so far, but uh, yeah. I want to go back, and I will do definitely. Yeah. Will. Fantastic. Well, that, that, yeah, that's great to talk dive in. We really look forward to when we can all get back in the water, especially Jim and I coming up and meeting you for a for a dive in Cape and Ray, and perhaps yeah. maybe we'll all go out uh, to the Farne Islands too. Yeah, definitely. Like I say, it's it's been a little while since I've been out in the UK diving with a dry suit, so it'd be quite good to um, go to Cape and Ray and just get to grips with it before I jump in the sea. Um, but yeah, um, I'm looking forward to it. To be honest with you, it's kind of just talking to you guys over the last week or two has kind of given me the bug again to, to go out and do it. Certainly, I think maybe because now I've got a lot more free time, obviously forced free time, um, yeah. it kind of makes me want to do it. Obviously, hopefully when this lockdown and everything hopefully goes back to normal, I will obviously be a little bit busier, but I'm going to try and make a bit of time to, to continue diving really. Yeah. Well, and, and good luck with the podcast. Hopefully, um, we'll get to chat to you about that at, at some point. And uh, do you have a phone in for that? Is it something you can phone into and speak to you guys? Or we don't necessarily have a phone in, um, uh, but we do because we do it live. We put it out on our um, YouTube channel, um, which is uh, LS. It's LS Eleven League United fan channel. Um, if you just search LS11 in YouTube, you'll find us. Yeah. And we also have uh, on our Facebook page, um, LS11's Facebook page. Yeah. And um, yeah, li we're live every Wednesday morning um, on YouTube and Facebook. And if you comment in, um, we can see your comments. We read comments out. We put them up on 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 the screen as well. And we have we, we talk about them. We have, have them as discussion points. So it's quite an interactive podcast. Like I say, it can be challenging doing it live. And there's some comments that we wouldn't really ever want to read out because they might be uh, a little bit sweary or a little bit naughty. So um, uh, fortunately, we can um, manage that and um, police the ones that we want to go on and the ones we don't. So, um, yeah, it's good fun. And a lot of people do interact every Wednesday morning. I think we have a couple of hundred listeners live and they all chat uh, chat amongst each other as well half the time. Um, they stop listening to us and just chat to each other on on youtube comment <laughs> that must um, be quite funny <laughs> it is yeah, until, the start, until, the, until the start arguing about who's better player a or player b or something and <laughs> we're just continuing our podcast and there's people <laughs> arguing but that's football fans for you everybody's got an opinion and i guess when it starts again so on on father's day um mm -hmm. i guess you guys are going to start be you'll be a bit busier because there'll be a lot more for for people to talk about won't there exactly yeah i mean it's not only the podcast that we do on ls11 we 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 put out videos um usually we we have uh, press access to ellen road unfortunately we, we, we we're not allowed that uh, for the remaining games it's kind of exclusive for bbc and sky big 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 guys really unfortunately for us um so we and we used to talk to fans outside the game getting opinions after the game and it, the, the videos went went very well we've got a lot of downloads and a lot of um views on people's opinions and unfortunately can't do that so we're, we're looking into doing things at home really you know and seeing if we can do things over the internet like like we're doing now and things like that so um yeah we'll we'll, we'll, we'll keep plugging away um it's an inconvenience but we'll get we'll get through it well, well watch out for some comments from me because uh, <laughs> uh like i said you're, you're my new best friend now because you're a diver you're leeds united <laughs> <laughs> you're playing a, a band so you know yeah. who who wouldn't want you as a best friend so yeah watch, <laughs> out, uh, watch out for my comments every every, every wednesday morning ryan <laughs> oh, meet your new stalker <laughs> brilliant <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. brilliant. No, thank you so much for coming on ryan good luck with the awards that you mentioned earlier and everything that you're doing with uh, uh, your podcast and we look forward to, to to blowing bubbles with you at some stage in the future that'd be fantastic oh definitely Th thanks for having me guys it's, it's been brilliant to, to talk about diving again you know like i said it's it's kind of given me the bug a little bit to to get to get it back in the water like i literally feel like i want to go and put my mask on a stick made in the bath or something at the moment just to get that feeling back again you know but um <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, it won't, um, be, long. It won't well, be too long. Dive side close to you, isn't there in Leeds in Pontefract? We were talking. Um, yeah, is that, maybe we could if that's open soon. That's uh, somewhere you can sort of just dip your toe in the water. Yeah, it's a place called Blue Lagoon. Um, but it's not very blue, unfortunately. It's quite brown. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's a dive site, and you know, um, I've I've only been a handful of times, and you know, we're a well-run little place. Um, really nice people who run it. Um, 
decent little facilities. But yeah, I, I, I'm going to get back in touch with um, uh, a friend of mine who's an instructor still at the um, the, the dive centre in Leeds. Um, the dive centre in Leeds has changed hands and changed name over the last 18 months since I was there. Um, so um, I don't really know who runs and owns it anymore. So um, maybe there might be some familiar faces there, but I'm still friends with a few guys who instruct and things like that. And, you know, um, I'll give them a shout, see what's going on and maybe they do some pool dives in a local pool training i might just tag along to some of them and um just get the feel yeah. for it get my buoyancy back a little bit um yeah. and then um yeah get He's back into it gently yeah exactly exactly because yeah, as you know that. guys you know safety is the biggest thing you know there's no egos in scuba diving in my opinion you know if you don't feel comfortable don't force yourself to do a dive that's the way i look at it you know no, and no, i'll be no. honest with you if i were just to go out tomorrow to cave and ray i really wouldn't feel comfortable because i haven't dived in a dry suit in a while you know um so i'd rather just really ease into it if i'm being honest with you but um yeah, but in in a wet suit it's a little bit different because i've done that fairly re fairly recently but um yeah the dry suit you don't want to get caught out not put not turning your valve the right way and things like that when you're on an ascent so um <laughs> um which is that yeah. which has happened wise words that no peer yeah. pressure in diving yeah no exactly exactly so um yeah i'm looking forward to easing back into it yeah no peer pressure but hurry up because we want to go diving. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'll get i'll get bath with my dry suit then see how that feels <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Take a picture of that, Ryan. We'll put it on there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, no, that the, the bath's a step too far. You've got to start off with the wife hosing you down in here. <laughs> then you go to the bath and then Yeah, I might do that. I might do that. Because it's actually not that warm outside at the moment. Um so if I did that a week or two ago and it a red hot, I'd be passing out almost. But um <laughs> yeah, now it's a bit cooler. Um, I'll dig it out, give it a bit of a clean down. It's been in my garage for a, a wee while, but all boxed up, hopefully away from spiders and things. So, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. We'll look forward to it. Yeah, yeah. really. Well. So, yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for coming on and hope to speak to you again really soon. Definitely. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Excellent. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Ryan. Cheers. Cool. Same clothes far too long Going out with, yes she going